So I'm joined here today by uh, Bob Rubin, Robert Rubin, um, former Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, to talk about the world economy and all the things to worry about. So, Bob, what are all the things to worry about? What is actually keeping you awake at night? Well, I sleep pretty well, Martin, no matter what. If I didn't, I don't think I'd have survived this long, but I think there's a lot to worry about. But there's always a lot to worry about, but I think this is a particularly uncertain and complicated time. I think the U.S. is probably okay in terms of just having a slow recovery. I think the probability of recession is very low, even though we've had a long recovery. I think the European Union is a mess, and as far as I can see, they're not doing anything to try to change that. China, unfortunately, and I know you've spent a lot of time in China, and I've spent a little bit too, is I think become much more complex and uncertain than any of us are accustomed to thinking of it, or than they're accustomed to thinking of it. And I think that's a problem. Japan has virtually no growth, and they've given up on structural reform, which is what they really needed to do. And then you've got geopolitical risks, you've got political systems of dysfunctional and major democracies, and you have uh, potential tail risks in the geopolitical area. I'm sure I haven't begun to cover the full range, but that's some of a number of things to think about, at least. Well, there's certainly uh, enough going on. As you said, in the U.S., there is quite a bit of optimism. Unemployment has really fallen way down. Everybody expects the Fed to tighten further. You think that's the right thing to do? You no, know, I don't think I totally agree, Martin, with the concept of optimism. When you speak to people who run companies, and I'm still employed, I have a job, and as a consequence, I do a fair bit of this, they feel okay. Revenues are sort of mediocre. They think the economy will continue. The U.S. economy, I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, at a relatively slow pace. I think they really have reduce their concern about recession. But there's not a, a, an affirmative, positive feeling about robustness, which is why the investment in the United States is so slow. As far as the Fed's concerned, I have not the foggiest notion what they're going to do. And I, frankly, in a substantive sense, I don't think it makes any difference. Now, in a psychological sense, it would because we're, unfortunately, the media and analysts are obsessed with the Fed. But in fact, I think a quarter point increase in rates is of zero significance with respect to decisions that businesses are making. Now, the psychology of it's a different matter. We, unfortunately, as I say, have this obsession. Let's talk about the political risks a bit. So one of the things people are concerned about is what would a President Trump mean? You know, I think it's impossible to know what a President Trump would mean. Uh, Hillary I know well. I used to have the office right down from her for two years in the White House. I got to know her pretty well. She's a pragmatist. She's got progressive values. I think she'd do a very good job. I don't have any idea what a President Trump would mean. I don't even know if Trump has any idea what a President Trump would mean. The one thing I do know is I was in one administration, and I'm pretty good conversant with a lot of other, well, a number of others, and they operate within a broad institutional framework. And if she's president, she will operate within that broad. How he will operate, I think, is unpredict un unknowable and un unpredictable. Do you think there is a serious chance he might become president? Well, as you know, Martin, uh, the probability the probability range has narrowed very substantially, and a lot of the polls are now showing relatively close odds. My own, I'm not licensed to practice politics, but I've been around this a long time, and I have a view. And my view is that the odds of her getting elected are very high and much higher than the polls tend to indicate. But I, having said that, I'm not in touch with the, 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 the American electorate. And the uncertainties are, could, be, could be enormous. This is unprecedented time in American history. So how is this happening? I mean, this is surely the biggest issue. How could it be that the U.S., which everybody in the world is a prosperous country, well, the richest country in history, uh, it's come, has come out of the recession? Okay, the economy isn't great. Why are people going for this complete tyro? Well, as you know, Martin, the polls show the wrong track, right track polls. What do the American people think the country is heading? The two-thirds of the American people think the country is on the wrong track. We've had stagnant median real wages. There's a lot of job insecurity. There's been a lot of job loss. My guess is, and I know there are a lot of different views on this, but my guess is the labor market has more slack in it than we think. And most people simply have not done well. And I, there's a lot of anger, and there's a lot of frustration, and there's a lot of uh, disaffection. In addition, I think there's been, and this is a little more uh, intangible, but I think there's been a, a kind of a cultural dislocation. I think a lot of people who felt they had a privileged privileged position in our society as economic conditions have changed and as the demographics of America have changed, feel dislocated. And I think you put all that together and you have a tremendous sense of dissatisfaction and anger, which reflects itself not only in the support for Mr. Trump, but for Mr. Sanders. Let's go to the world outside. Does anyone here in the U.S. think about Brexit, about Britain leaving the EU? Is that something that is even above the radar? 
You know, Martin, I go whole weeks in New York, and I'm part of this world, so I kind of pretty conversant with it, I think. And I don't hear much talk about Brexit. But if Brexit were to happen, I think people would become acutely aware of it because I think it could really be very disruptive. And does that mean possibly the EU falling apart? Do you think that, that the whole Western structure, the, this sort of where we come, the sort of sense that the post-war period is coming to an end in some way? You write about this extremely well, Martin. Or, well, not extremely well, but very well. And that's I, the best compliment I've heard. <laughs> well, that's why I say it's extremely to very. <laughs> but I, I, I may be wrong about this. I don't know. But from my side, our side of the Atlantic, the EU seems to me, the Eurozone is a mess. And the EU seems to me to, under tremendous strain in all kinds of ways, obviously the migrants, but other ways as well. This could be, I, I, I think, maybe I'm wrong, I think this could be a real blow to the EU, whether it results, what effects it has, how it works itself out. I don't think the EU will come apart, I, I wouldn't guess. But I think it is, I think the idea of the European project certainly seems to have lost its impetus. So these are clearly very, very uncertain times. Thank you very, very much. You're more than welcome. <laughs>